Scene 10. Go! Hi, my name is Carrie Caldwell and this is Zia Cooking. I am so excited and glad you could join me today. I've always wanted to share my delicious recipes with all my friends and family and now I can because Zia Cooking is the place where we're going to come together, we're going to learn more about cooking and I am going to share with you all the amazing stories that I've learned from my family, from my ancestors, from our heritage. We'll be talking about recipes from northern New Mexico all the way to southern New Mexico. Zia Cooking is where it's at. We're going to get together, we're going to share recipes, we're going to have fun and we are going to bring dinner to the table. Hello, welcome New Mexico cooking fans. I'm so glad that you could join me back and if you notice, we're in a new kitchen. Now, things happen all the time and changes are rolling around and guess what? I live in a new place so help me break in my new kitchen with a new recipe. And the recipe I'm going to be making and sharing today is a real wonderful food that if I ever had to think about a comfort food that really summed up New Mexico, this would definitely be on my most wanted list and that is for calabacitas. I'm also making this recipe today because a very special person who happens to be my little sister Darcy said that it would be a great time to make it because it's fall and we grew up in Corrales, New Mexico as kids and we used to go to a growers market there very similar to a farmers market where we would share our vegetables we grew and purchase vegetables that other people were growing in the area as well. So I'm really excited to share you uh, this recipe with you and show you how easy it is to make it. So let's go ahead and get started. Calabacitas is mainly the main ingredient we're going to be using is squash and so today I chose to use zucchini I chose to use some yellow squash and of course the Mexican squash with calabacita. All of these different types of squash um, you can use singularly but I like to blend them up because the colors are so bright and it's a really great fall recipe to make. I'm going to be using some fresh tomatoes. Also I like to add in corn and this corn I've already prepared and removed from our cob but you can use canned corn or you can use frozen corn if it's easier for you. Now since I'm the New Mexico chili girl and I love always talking about my green chili that I get from local farmers in Hatch. I'm going to add a little bit of that to kick up our spice level. Now, Calabacitas is a recipe just like enchiladas or tacos. You see so many families have their own version. So I'm going to share my recipe with you and I look forward to you giving me some feedback and letting me know how your family makes it, what different styles you have and make sure you leave those comments below because we love using Zia Cooking to share our different ideas and recipes with each other. Now when I make calabacitas, I make it con queso, meaning with cheese. I love that gooey cheese and if I can have a chance to add in chili and cheese to any recipe, you know that I always do. Let's go ahead and get started now. I'm going to go ahead and be using um, one of my small um, Dutch ovens. Um, it's a cast iron and I like to use this but any type of skillet will work for you. And today we're going to go ahead and we're going to start with just a little bit of olive oil in there. When I'm making my calabacita, I like to make it more as a side dish or if I add in some ground beef or chicken I can make it as a main dish. But some people like to make it sopa style meaning like a soup and that really is good on a cold day. So for myself uh, we're going to go ahead and be preparing it today um, as a side dish or as a main dish that we can use. So we're going to use a little bit of olive oil and I like to add in a little bit of salted butter. That is a combination I find that works really well when I'm sautéing. Uh, vegetables. So as we get that going, I'm going to go ahead and we're going to start, excuse me, with our uh, vegetable cutting. I like to use um, small sizes so that we can use as bite size. These are really, really tasty um, zucchini and I know that a lot of people um, wonder about different ways of preparing it and so I'm going to show you my easy style and the way that I do it today. I really like to have my vegetables al dente or a little bit more firm um, but everybody again has a different style of cooking and so um, let's go ahead and let me share some of my techniques with you today. The spices that I'm going to be incorporating as I'm preparing all these delicious vegetables I like to add in salt, some pepper, 
I like to also add in a little bit of um, garlic salt as well. Look how beautiful these vegetables are. A lot of times my kids growing up, they weren't big vegetable fans and so this is something that I would like to prepare for them. Um, especially when it's covered with cheese and I would put the chili on the side. This is a way that I would get my guys to eat a lot of vegetables or incorporate that into their diet. So as we come together, you can see it's simply chopping and preparing them. Nothing has to be perfect, especially when you're working in your kitchen. I have a special ingredient and I'm going to be sharing that with you guys as I prepare this delicious meal. But um, our calabacita recipe is a little bit different in our family. And the reason, excuse me guys, the reason that um, I'm going to share a special little thing with you is it's really a tribute to my granny. My granny, Mariana Lara Lopez, was born in a very small community called Verino. And that is about 23, 25 miles south of Las Cruces. And she was born on a farm. And her mother, Cruz, her father, Victoriano, they um, grew all of their vegetables, but they uh, mainly their farm um, money source or cash crop source was cotton. But growing up, my granny had um, dairy cows and a lot of people um, at that time would make their own, not just uh, milk, but they would make their own cheese and butter. And my great grandmother Cruz was very famous for making uh, queso fresco or a cottage cheese. And so that is something that I'm going to be sharing and incorporating in our recipe. And some people think about that and say, cottage cheese? Really? Would you incorporate that in a cheesy calabacita? Absolutely I would. The reason that I enjoy doing that is it reminds me of my granny. It was something that we would incorporate to a lot of meals. Um, we would also serve it sometimes with beans. And so it might be different than you find in your kitchen or your family traditions, but it's something that makes me think about her. And it's something that I like to just share with you. It looks like our uh, butter and oil is ready. So we're going to go ahead and we are going to start to add in these delicious vegetables. Oh, I love the sound when that hits that hot oil. Now I'm going to be moving pretty quickly as we get to, um, assembling this dish right now. But you can see I'm just simply adding in these vegetables to start sauteing. I'm going to toss them in, make sure that they're all coated in that lovely olive oil and butter combination. And at this time, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add in some onion. I like to keep the onion sizes small when I add them in. But again, I'm the queen of the coarse chopping and I love my ulu for putting these into a little bit of a smaller size. Now going back into the cheese making, you know me, I talk a lot while I'm cooking and I like to share all my different tips and techniques, is um, my granny at a very young age, uh, once her mother made the cottage cheese, they would hire a lot of migrant workers to help them uh, with farming, with gathering the crops, and getting it ready for sale. And while the migrant workers were there, they had their families with them and, and children. And that is when my granny decided and knew that she was going to be a school teacher. She used to teach a lot of the migrant um, kids that traveled how to read. And that was really a special gift that she had in her heart. And, and uh, that led her on her career path to become a school teacher. Now, her very first job was after my great grandmother had prepared cheese is my grandmother would go around, especially on paydays, and she would go uh, to all the workers that worked at her farm. She was a very industrious young lady. And she would sell cottage cheese, and she would uh, put them in wax paper the size of her palm, and she would sell those for a nickel. And she really felt very powerful contributing to her family income. She said, Miha, sometimes I would even make 70 cents. I asked her, what would you do with that money, Granny? She said, I always gave it to my mom. She said, my mom never ever um, worked off of the farm and it was always nice for her to be able to give her a little bit of extra money. And um, those are wonderful stories. It makes my heart feel really warm when I think about how much um, we contribute to each other in our family household, how we share, but how the main source of our love is always in food and how we share those types of things with us. I really enjoy making videos. Um, with my cooking techniques, talking about it with 
my friends, but mainly for my family. I only have a few limited videos, and those were taken on my uh, cell phone of my granny. And so I love to talk about her on these videos for my YouTube channel because I can pass it to the next generation. I can share it with everyone around New Mexico. And the wonderful thing that I love is being able to ask you to share your stories, put them in the comments. Um, it gives us a chance to get to know each other better and it really brings us together from New Mexico. And if you haven't um, had a chance to look at some of my other videos or if you're just joining me for the first time, make sure you um, subscribe. Make sure that you give me either a thumbs up if you like it or a little bit of feedback if I can share some different things with you. Now as these vegetables are coming together, you can see I am just simply letting them cook at a lower um, heat. I'm probably at about a medium at this point right now. And we're going to just let those all come together and incorporate. And go ahead and add in our corn. So again, just as a quick recap, we've used three types of squash. We've used a zucchini, we've used a Mexican squash, and we've also used a yellow squash. We've got some fresh onion and all this delicious, lovely tomato coming together there. For spices, I like to keep things simple when I'm cooking with the vegetables. And the reason that I like to do that, um, go ahead and adjust the heat here, is I love the flavor of the vegetables and I let that do all the talking. So as it comes together, you can see it's a really beautiful color. And let's go ahead and add in some garlic at this time. For those of you who are new to cooking in the kitchen, you want to make sure that your garlic goes in fairly um, at the end or um, you know midway because garlic has a tendency to cook a little bit quicker than the onion and the other vegetables and we definitely don't want any um, bitter taste from overcooking it. Wonderful. Now I'm going to go ahead and add this in and stir it up together. And then when we get back together, I'm going to show you how easy it is to add the cheese and we're going to um, put this all together and I'll show you how it comes together and we'll take a big bite of it and hopefully it's as delicious as it smells. I just added that delicious garlic in and it's coming together so lovely. I can smell it. It just smells delicious. So let's go ahead and talk a little bit about some of the spices I'm going to use. I know I mentioned that I like to keep things simple. So today we're going with some basic um, salt and pepper. I'm using a little bit of garlic salt and I added just a touch of oregano because I really love that kick. But use what you like when you're cooking in your kitchen. We're going to go ahead and sprinkle that in. And then here goes the star of the show. It's that green chili. Now for those of you who are cooking for family with young ones or maybe uh, people don't want to incorporate green chili like I do in just about everything that I eat, you can always serve it on the side, but I think it makes a wonderful meal, especially when I use a medium or a mild blend. It really enhances and gives it a delicious taste without being too hot or overpowering anything. Now I talked to you a little bit about the calabacita con queso, so let me show you how easy it is to incorporate that. This right here is some creamy, delicious cottage cheese. Now some of us have used cottage cheese before, very similar to ricotta when we're making our lasagna. So I'm going to use a very similar technique here and I lightly just set it in. I'm not stirring it in, I'm just setting a few little cheese bombs as I like to call them, getting them incorporated there. Oh. I know I'm going to love this. And then on the top we're doing a nice wonderful cheese blend. And this is going to be a blend of Jack cheese, Monterey Jack, and some cheddar. So that's all going to come together and be melted and we're going to put it on our plate and take a big bite. And now for the best part, let's serve it and dive into that gooey cheese. Now this looks absolutely delicious. Oh, didn't hold back on any of that gooey cheese today. Remember we have our corn, our onions, and everything in here. Oh, look at that. Now this is a delicious side. It goes great as a main dish. Again, you can add in some uh, tomato sauce if you'd like to make it sopa style and have it soupy, but let's go ahead and enjoy some of this today. Thank you for joining me in my kitchen. I am so excited to see you. Make sure you give me a thumbs up and if you have not subscribed, come on guys, I'd like to see you do it now. Mmm, 
What? Heaven. <laughs> Love it. Bye, cooking friends.